Hello and welcome to Dancers. This is my weekly, possibly soon to be bi-weekly, video podcast. My name is Dan Donahue. Uh, if you like the show, please subscribe. It helps a lot. Or just watch the videos and don't subscribe. If you don't have the ability to describe, subscribe on YouTube, that just means that you don't have a YouTube channel page yourself. And that's a sign of strength and power. So good for you. I had a great weekend. I had one of the best weekends of all time. I did a show on Reba McIntyre's old horse farm. They converted that into like this weird sort of camping space slash performance space. They have like a little stage and stuff where I'm sure that they do like snake church most nights but there was a huge cross on the stage so I just assume but we had uh we had a show there and it was great it was a meetup for this podcast that my friend Jessa Reed does and she's a very good friend of mine and the people there were very very self-described like woo-woo people there's a lot of Reiki a lot of you know ufo sighting stuff it was a cool vibe i liked it a lot i got reiki done to myself i don't know if anyone out there has ever tried reiki but whenever i tell my friends about it they're immediately like dude that's fake that's a placebo it's all placebo listen to me and i'll say this once i don't care if something is a placebo if it makes me feel better I have never heard of someone overdosing on placebos, okay? I wish when my grandpa broke his hip, they gave him a bunch of placebos because then he wouldn't have developed a placebo addiction that made him a different person for the rest of his life, okay? Placebos, great in my book, okay? Reiki, great in my book. I will take a bottle of placebos Just please keep the Oxycontin away from me. I I almost forgot the best part of this. So I do the show. The show is awesome. Everybody's great. The next morning I wake up and the people with the in the retreat are doing like yoga. But then there's a bunch of dudes I didn't see the night before in cowboy hats and older guys. And I was like, these this is it was mostly women on the retreat and it was just almost all dudes or dudes with their wives. And I was like, what are they doing here? Are they fans of the podcast? And so I go up to the woman who's running the event and I go, what are they here for? Every guy is in a cowboy hat, by the way, not one guy without a cowboy hat, which in Nashville isn't that shocking. Usually there's one guy without a cowboy hat who's wearing like a bandana though, right? So I go, who are these people? And she goes, oh, it's cowboy church. And then she took a pause like that because I guess she assumed I knew what cowboy church was. And I said, what is cowboy church? And she said, well, it's just like church, only with a cowboy theme. And there was this really beautiful moment where people who were going to cowboy church were walking in and looking at the people doing yoga. And the people doing yoga were looking at the people going to cowboy church. And both of them simultaneously, very clearly had the thought, who are these psychopaths? And if only you could read minds, I feel like there would be a beautiful sort of sinistry happening between those two groups of like, what, what are you, why are you guys stretching in the morning? And then why are you guys going to church in cowboy hats? I wish both groups did both. I wish the people in cowboy church came and joined us for yoga. A group of people who I'm sure have not been in a lunge for 40 years because they think it's gay or something. And then a group of people who not only do not like church, but I'm sure escaped various churches to be where they are. I mean, I would just love to see that group come together, but it was a beautiful weekend. I had a great time. Let's get to a little bit of new stuff. Let's get to current events. I'm excited for current events. So the first story is about Florida's uh, bill. It's something like the Parental Rights and Education Bill, but this bill is better known as the Don't Say Gay Bill, and it's going to affect in Florida. Kids are going back to school. And the bill says it bans lessons on sexual orientation and gender identity in kindergarten through third grade. 
let me tell you something about those age groups. Let me tell you about the age groups, kindergarten through third grade. If you're a boy in those age groups, I don't know about girls. I was a boy growing up, so I only know about that. You have been called gay at least a thousand times in between kindergarten and third grade. You So the idea that you're going to shield kids from learning about sexual orientation or gender identity before those grades is ridiculous. All you're basically saying is instead of a probably responsible adult teaching them about it, I'm going to let that kid Isaac who eats paint down the street give my child the first taste of what this is. You're saying instead of letting my kid understand what gay actually means, I'm just going to let it be something that he gets called by his friends when he doesn't pick up a rattlesnake, okay? And it, it's one of those things where also, this is Florida, okay? We're talking about Florida. Beautiful state. I love the state of Florida, okay? I'm not one of these people who's like, oh, Florida. It's like, it's beautiful and it's fun. It's like, there's nothing wrong, but bills like this hurt Florida for me because it hurts the people of Florida, okay? Because if you're not going to teach your kid about sexual orientation, how are you going to explain Miami to them? Tell me that, okay? Are you going to cover their eyes when you drive through Miami? Is that the idea? Like, you're going to have to go to Miami. If you live in Florida, that's a, it's a must. How are you going to, are you going to just let your kid exist in this bubble where he thinks, you know, there's only straight people. And then as you go to Miami, just blow their minds, just completely let them go. Everything I know is wrong. Don't do that to them. Right. I don't know. It's, it's one of those things where it's like when I was a kid, right, my parents, you know, explained that they're same sex people very gently to me and it wasn't like it was it wasn't something that any teachers in my school were really talking about and if they were they were being pretty good about it they were just like oh yeah sometimes you know same sex people love each other and they get married or it doesn't really matter what your orientation is that didn't make me go like i i have to be something else now i i don't know it just never it doesn't make sense to me because i my first experience with gay people was I went to on vacation with my family to Cape Cod and we stayed at our cousin's friend's place who were a same sex couple and it was a beautiful place and it was like aw and I it was uh this guy and his husband lived there and I was like who lives here and they were like oh these two guys and I was like oh are they friends are they like best friends who bought a house together and and you know what as, as sure I was wrong, but it was nice that at that age, I also thought people could be that good of friends where they could be like, yeah, let's get a house together and live there and share the same bedroom. But my dad was like, no, no, they're, they're like married. They're together. And I was like, oh, okay. And I remember this kid at summer camp talking about how like gay people are bad. He was from upstate New York, which, you know, sure. And he was talking about how, like, he didn't like gay people. And I remember because of that initial experience and because my parents explained it to me, I, I was able to be like, yeah, no, I, I was staying at a house of two guys and they seemed cool. So I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. But if you don't have those, like, initial learning experience, wherever they come from, it, it, it doesn't really prepare you for the real world i don't know it just it's very strange it's strange because these are the people who are like kids aren't ready for the real world school doesn't teach kids to be ready for the real world and then it's like this is a big part of the real world if you want to go to any fun part of a city you're gonna have to learn that gay people exist i don't know what you're talking about it's, it's nuts so this next story, White House announces funding for youth substance abuse programs to tackle overdose epidemic. So I read this and I immediately go, uh, funding for youth substance abuse program. Uh, D.A.R.E. was one of those, incredibly ineffective. My experience with youth substance abuse programs is that they're very ineffective. So my buzzer immediately goes off. I don't 
think that this is a gonna work right and you gotta try something but i think there's better things to try than youth substance abuse programs but my mind is open when i read that article i'm not shutting down immediately i'm like okay let's hear them out this is one of the first things it says it will tackle a range of substances like marijuana tobacco and alcohol the first one marijuana i'm immediately like this isn't this isn't gonna work we're not doing the right thing here you're gonna tackle the opioid epidemic you're literally saying overdose you're taking a drug marijuana which you cannot overdose on and you're leading off with that and then tobacco which um unless you count the uh guys who did commercial demolition that i worked with you cannot overdose on tobacco and if they did, overdosing on tobacco just looks like you play scratch tickets until you don't have any money anymore. That's a tobacco overdose, okay? It just, it makes no sense because if you want kids to stop taking and doing opioids, just make them harder to get. Because when I was in high school, we we had we were past Oxycontin by the time I was in high school, pretty much. Like, there were still opioids around, but Oxy wasn't big when I was a kid. Oxy hit a little bit before I was in high school. But when Oxy was around, I would talk to older kids, and they would be like, oh, yeah, you could just go anywhere and get Oxy. Like, it was so—and now a lot of those kids are on heroin— so it's so funny that the government is just allowing companies to make like opioids at such a high volume and to distribute them at such a high volume and then turn around and go like, how do we solve this problem? I know we'll get a talking owl to come to schools and tell kids doing drugs is naughty. It's never worked. It's never going to work. It's just so crazy to me that there's a way to solve the opioid epidemic, which is make op opioids harder to get, and then for people with opioid problems, have a good, shame-free system for them to get clean. But they're like, no, 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 no. We're not going to do any of that uh, horse shit, okay? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get a talking parakeet, big mascot talking parakeet, and he's going to come into schools, and he's going to go, hey, if, <laughs> hey, if you do heroin, you're going to make your mom sad, okay? I, I just don't, because there's fentanyl everywhere now, right? And fentanyl is in every single drug that there is. I have gone to comedy shows where in the green room they have fentanyl testing strips. And let me tell you, these are not clubs where they condone drug use. These are not establishments where they're like, yeah, th uh, at this comedy club, you get to do heroin. They d it's not that sort of thing. They have fentanyl test kits in green rooms, even though they don't want people doing hard drugs there, but because it is such a prevalent risk, and it is so risky for these clubs to have comedians there partying and potentially doing drugs and potentially overdosing at their establishment. They have had to make the attrition that we're just going to put fentanyl test strips in here because the risk is so great. And I see that and I go, this is really sad, but also a step in the right direction. Because I think as soon as we can kind of be adults about this and go, adults do hard drugs all the time, whether they're prescription or non-prescription, which I think we should stop making that distinction. We like making that distinction because drug companies love that distinction. They love that it's like, well, there's drug abusers and then there's prescription drug abusers. There's drug abusers and then there's people who are just being a little naughty on the weekend. It's like, no, I don't care. I don't, whatever the fucking chemical makeup of the drug is what I care about. I don't care if it came in a bottle that has a multi-million dollar company on it. It's just crazy to me that there is a way to figure this out and we're still pumping money into these dumbass dare programs. It's like we had this drunk driving uh, program in our school where they, they took out all the stops. Let me tell you about this drunk driving program. They would take a totaled car and put it in front of our school with a sign that's like, this is what happens when you drunk drive right? 
they would take kids in an auditorium on a multi-day thing where they had their parents uh, in there and drunk people who'd lost their kids to drunk driving would talk to them, would like, would let them know like, this is how much this hurt. The kids would have to go up and like, tell their parents, this is what blah, blah, blah. The parents would have to go up and say, this is what would happen if you died from drunk driving and how much it would affect me. And they're all crying and it's in this big auditorium, blah, blah, blah. I knew kids that were drinking at that, on, on those days at school and would drunk drive home. Kids are stupid. They're stupid, stupid beings. That, that's not to say you shouldn't tell them to not drunk drive, but what I'm saying is these programs don't really work that well. And there's things that work way better than these programs, such as establishing with your kid a healthy relationship to alcohol. And also, if it's something like opioids, not letting a company just produce them ad nauseum when they're unnecessary for the most part, for most people taking them. I don't know. That's a little ranty. I'm sorry about that. Let's get into some questions. Okay, this is this is a question that was sent to the email. If you want to email a question, uh, it's dancerspodcast at gmail.com. I'm going to put it in the comments. Or if you have any news stories that you want me to cover, I would love to hear them. But here's the first question. I've always wanted to be a mom, but never really a wife. I will probably adopt someday, but I also want to experience pregnancy. You're, you're a sick person. No, I'm kidding. Uh, is it too problematic to sleep with some dude and purposely get knocked up? What an incredible question. So you're asking if it's ethical to get pregnant uh, purposely by a guy just to be like, hey, fella, it's your lucky day. You're, you're not pulling out tonight. Just to paint a picture. So here's what I say to that. Is it too problematic to sleep with a dude and purposely get knocked up? If you don't tell the guy and that is your plan, there is a lapse in ethics there. But I have good news. A as a woman, maybe you don't. You can just tell the guy. Okay? You can tell the guy, hey, you're not going to have to raise this kid. I just want to get pregnant from you. And I can almost guarantee they'll be thrilled at the idea. Now, you'll probably have to sign something just to make sure they're like, okay. But they're going to be... I know guys that do that for free. I know... I've known guys from my hometown who have done the exact service that you're talking about uh, while the woman actually wants them to raise the kid. So... You're gonna be fine. This is not uh, you're you're looking you're looking for uh, you're looking for someone to mount your TV in a town full of mechanics. Okay, this is gonna be pretty easy. In fact, let me tell you something. My friend Miles will do this for you at no extra charge. He will do this for you, and in fact, he will pay you for to do this. You're you're asking. Would a guy be okay with his seed being propagated at no uh, detriment to him? Guys are into that, okay? Now, what you said about adoption, I think is really cool. I think it's a good sidestep for this. Obviously, you want to experience pregnancy, right? But I've actually, I've talked to a lot of women who have experienced pregnancy, right? And uh, I actually have a workaround for you. Uh, it's where you can experience pregnancy, not actually have to get pregnant, and you can adopt the kid. Go to an MMA gym, any local mixed martial arts gym. Make sure it's legit. No Aikido, okay? I mean, Aikido is fine, but I, I'm for the purpose of this. No Aikido, no, uh, no Aikido. You, maybe we, maybe we could use judo. Maybe judo. Maybe taekwondo. Taekwondo people will probably be a little bit too respectful. I want mixed martial arts. I want MMA on the side of the gym. I want you to go up to the person who runs the gym. And I want you to go, I want to go five, five minute rounds with you. Don't hold back. And that will be close to the experience of pregnancy. I feel like that'll be maybe, it'll be a sliver. It'll be enough of the experience. And by the way, I've been to enough MMA gyms to know the owner of that gym would be happy to do that for you. And then when you're done with that, you can go, okay, I've experienced pregnancy. I took enough body shots here to have experienced pregnancy. Let's adopt a child. Um, 
Question number two, how do you pick yourself up when you're feeling down? This is a great question. I uh, do what a lot of people who feel down uh, are insulted by. I ask myself the question, did I sleep enough? Did I drink enough water? And mind you, I have asked myself this question when feeling truly clinical level depression. And it really does. It's not everything. I've gotten good enough sleep. Now, if you're one of those people out there who's just willy nilly being like, if you're depressed, you just haven't slept enough and you haven't drank enough water. You have no idea. I have I have been on a gallon and a half a day getting eight hours of sleep and I very much wanted to walk off a bridge okay so don't don't insult me by thinking my depression can't handle a little bit of sleep and water okay my depression is incredibly powerful it's going to take more than that to take down mine but I, I mean those are those are the basics my my thought process is it is a little bit insulting to certain people if they say they're depressed and your first reaction is to ask about the basics like sleep and water and stuff but to me, I think if you are experiencing depression, you should ask yourself, are the basics being met before moving on to more, uh, you know, kind of scary solutions, which are like, you know, getting on medication, which I think medication is great for a lot of people and it helps a lot of people out. But I mean, there's more side effects, negative side effects to medication than there are for drinking water and sleeping enough. So weigh those options and then uh yeah i would say i've been in places also where i'm like you can't fathom how sad i feel you have no idea how sad i feel you could no one can understand i'm just listening to uh to dashboard confessions you have no idea and then i actually do those basics like and it's like oh no i was wrong i'm my brain literally isn't firing off correctly so that's how I feel better. I do that. And then a lot of times, I mean, I'm kind of a psychopath with exercise. So I'll do a lot of that. I'll like lift. I'll uh, go on like crazy walks. I'll go on crazy hikes. It's like that sort of stuff can balance you out, but it can also burn you out. You know, it, it's, it's, you have to kind of be a chemist with your own brain when you're feeling sad. And sometimes you have a failed experiment. Sometimes I'll go on a big hike and I'll get home and I'll be like, Damn, now I still want to kill myself, but I smell like pine, which is better. But you you have to you have to just ride the wave out. You you don't do anything like drastic ever. I, my grandma always said, "Don't uh, don't permanently solve a temporary problem." You know what I mean? And yeah, I, I think it's just sort of being a scientist and have. This is crazy to say, but it's like, have a little fun with it. And whether that mean like, you completely take some time to yourself, it's like, that's great. Like, to experiment with that, see how that feels. But don't don't ever be in a place where you're like, oh, well, I've tried everything. Because there's always something new to try. You know what I mean? That's a real positive note to end this on. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you liked it, again, please subscribe to the YouTube Please give this a thumbs up, throw a comment in, and email, 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 email. I like using the email because it centralizes everything for me. I don't have to go to eight different social media platforms. So if you have a question or you want me to cover a news story, please hit me in the email. Hit me in the email. Anyway, have a good one.